Hi everyone, in this video we learn about the backpropagation algorithm. Backpropagation is probably the most important concept in deep learning and is essential for the training process of a neural network. So today we have a look at what backpropagation is and how it works and then I also walk you through a concrete example with some numbers because I think this will help you to better understand the theory behind the algorithm. This video is part of the Deep Learning Explain series by Assembly AI which is a company that creates a state-of-the-art speed to text API and if you want to try assembly AI for free you can grab your free API token using the link in the description and now let's get started. Backpropagation computes the gradients of a loss function with respect to the weights in a neural network. This gradient is then used to update the weights in the training step for example with an optimization algorithm like gradient descent. Now a quick side note, I'm going to use the term gradient in this video all the time and with gradient I also mean derivative. So here we have a neural network with an input layer, a hidden layer and an output layer and at each neuron we have different weights and then we multiply the weights with the input x and maybe add a bias. And now the way it works is that we first do a forward pass where we apply all those neurons and then calculate the loss at the very end and then we apply the back propagation algorithm which means we apply a backward pass and can then calculate the gradients with a special method and then with this gradient we can update the weights which means our neural network learns and gets better. So we will have a closer look at the backward pass but before we do this we have to understand two more concepts. The first concept is the concept of a computational graph. When we create our network with all the neurons, each computation in it is represented by a node. So for example here we have a multiplication node that simply multiplies the two inputs x and w with each other. And then of course we also have many more computations in this graph and at the very end we calculate the loss. And like I said we then want to calculate the gradient of the loss with respect to the weights. So the concept of the computation computational graph is the first thing we should keep in mind. This is also what deep learning frameworks like PyTorch and TensorFlow use internally to track all the computations in the network. And the second concept we should know is the chain rule. This is a mathematical formula that is needed to calculate the gradients. So here we have a simple computational graph with an input A that gets transformed by the first node and then we get the output B and this in turn gets transformed by the second node and we get the output C. Now the chain rule says that the gradient of C with respect to A can be computed by the gradient of C with respect to B times the gradient of B with respect to A. So we should remember this formula and don't worry it's not that difficult when we look at a concrete example in a moment. So going back to our computational graph we can now calculate the gradient of the loss with respect to the weights by saying it's the gradient of the loss with respect to y times the gradient of y with respect to w. Both of those inner gradients are also called local gradients and they can be calculated pretty easy. For example if we have a look at this node here we know this is a multiplication node so we know the function or the calculations here. Y gets calculated by applying the function w times x and the derivative of w times x with respect to w is simply x. So we can do this for all the nodes in our network which just are simple computational nodes and then we can also easily calculate the local gradients. So we have to start at the very last node and then step by step go backwards to the first node. And this is the whole concept of the backpropagation algorithm. First we do a forward pass and do all calculations and calculate the loss. Then we compute all local gradients and then we do a backward pass and apply the chain rule. So with this we calculate the gradient of the loss with respect to the weights and then of course we can update the weights somehow with this information. And that's it. So now let's take a look at a concrete example to better understand all steps. In this example we look at a simple linear regression algorithm. We can also represent this with a neural network and a computational graph. 
First, we have a multiplication node that multiplies the weights and the input, and we get an approximated y that we call y hat. Then we also have the actual y, so we use a second subtraction node and we calculate y hat minus y. And then we calculate the loss function, which usually is the root mean squared error. And to keep it simpler, we only use the squared error here. So we have one more node with a square operation and then obtain the loss. Now the task is to to minimize the loss, for example with the gradient descent method. So for this we have to calculate the gradient of the loss with respect to the weights. And we just learned we have to apply three steps. First we do the forward pass and calculate the loss. Then at each node we calculate the local gradients starting at the end. So we have d loss with respect to s, then ds with respect to y hat and d y hat with respect to w. And then we do the backward pass and can calculate d loss with respect to y hat and finally d loss with respect to w. So this is what we need and we get this by applying the chain rule. So let's use some actual numbers here. So for example we know the input x and the corresponding y from the training data and we simply initialize the first weight with 1. So y hat is the multiplication 1 times 1 which is 1. Then we do the subtraction 1 minus 2 which is minus 1 and then we do the square operation so the loss is minus 1 squared which is 1. Now let's calculate the local gradients d loss with respect to s. We know the function so this is s squared and the gradient of s squared with respect to s is 2s. Next we calculate the gradient of s with respect to y hat. So again we apply the actual calculations. This is the gradient of y hat minus y with respect to y hat which is simply 1. And then we calculate the gradient of y hat with respect to w and y hat can be written as w times x and the gradient of this is x. So now let's do the backward pass. We calculate the gradient of the loss with respect to y hat by applying the chain rule. So these two gradients are the two local gradients we just computed. So this is 2 times s times 1. And we also know that s is minus 1 from our forward pass calculations. So this is then minus 2. So the very last step is to calculate the gradient of the loss with respect to w. Again we apply the chain rule. So here we have the gradient from the previous step d loss with respect to y hat times the local gradient d y hat with respect to w. And then we insert the actual numbers minus 2 times x. So this is minus 2. And then we reach the end and can update our weights. And that's basically it. So if you couldn't follow every step right now, this is fine. You can get the slides using the link in the description and then you can go through it again in your own pace. But I hope I could explain the concept of backpropagation in a fairly simple way. If you still have any questions, then let me know in the comments. And also if you enjoyed the video, then please hit the like button and consider subscribing to our channel for more content like this. And then I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.